Uh, I first listened to hardcore music when I was 16 years old. My brother would drive us to school in his car um, and he would listen to this fast and annoying and screamy music. And I hated it and I would say, just turn it off, turn it off, put on something else. But he kept it on. And after about a week, I heard through the noise, I heard the passion. And I fell in love with it. Hardcore music gave me a way to have a good relationship with my brother and with his friends. We all got along because we all enjoyed hardcore music and it didn't matter if we had nothing else in common because we all enjoyed hardcore music. The music formed meaningful relationships for me and it helped me to build a genuine community of people who I had similar interests with. After a few months, of listening to hardcore mostly through headphones in my brother's car. Um, I went to I went to my first show with a few of these guys, my brother's friends. It opened me up to a world that was full of, of passion and the music was loud and it was fun and there was so much embrace in that community, there was so much energy in that community. We used to run in circle pits, we would fight dance, we'd grab the microphone off the stage and scream into it. The thing I loved about hardcore was how everyone was everyone was on the same page. There was no one who was more important than anyone else. And so you would go to a show and there was no barricade between the band and the crowd. There was hardly ever a stage. You would you could go up on the stage if there was one and you would jump you would jump off and you could grab the microphone and you could sing into it. Everyone's voice was was welcome. Everyone was welcome to, to have their say. I love that about hardcore. After a band would play, no matter how famous they are, they would hop off the stage and stand down with the crowd and it made no difference. They were just another guy. I love that. Everyone was equal. Boys and girls, it didn't matter what you were, it didn't matter who you were, it didn't matter what you do, it didn't matter what, like, what part of the city you came from, everyone was equal. And we all helped each other out as well. There was this sense of a sincere brotherhood in hardcore. Um, if you fell over or if you got hurt, the band would stop playing and they would tell everyone to take care of you. There was this real genuine community in hardcore, which I really appreciate. I felt like I felt like I'd found this community that I had been genuinely looking for, but I found nowhere else. I belonged to these people. It was a genuine community, and I was a part of it. It was a natural embrace. We loved each other. It was a genuine community. And after a few years, I started to feel this level of superiority um, about myself when I would go to hardcore shows. I've been around for a while and I felt a sense of entitlement. I felt a sense of entitlement that, that I, I deserved more, that I should get more than other people in the show because I'd been around for longer than they had been around. Or because I knew music better than they knew music, or because I looked the part more than they did. Um, maybe I'm committed to the hardcore mentality more than other people are. Maybe like you know, straight edge or veganism or PMA or that sort of thing. I just felt this sense of I belong here and you don't. I've, I've earned this and you haven't. 
that genuine community that I'd seen in my early years when it was flourishing for me, I didn't have that anymore because I looked around and I felt the sense of the tunnel. Like I deserved more than they did. I realized that I realized that this sense of entitlement was corrupting the community. The thing was that this entitlement came so naturally to me. I couldn't stop it. I couldn't avoid it. It just happened. I couldn't escape this entitlement that I felt. And as, as I could see it, the genuine community that I had found in hardcore, that sense of real belonging, it was a false promise. I was still searching for a place to have genuine community. I was searching for a place where I could genuinely belong without this sense of entitlement ruining me. And it's, it's strange to say that the place that I found that is with the God of Christianity. Is often accused of being divisive and ruining love. And so often that's the way that he's portrayed to us. But in reality, the God of Christianity is himself a genuine community. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the three of them live in perfect unity with each other. And the three of them, genuine, in genuine community with each other, long for us to be in genuine communities as well. See, the Bible says that we've all sinned and fallen short of God's standard. Now, I know sin is a dangerous word. But basically, this is really important. It says, no one is more entitled than anyone else. We're all on the same page. To put it in hardcore terms, there's no stage that people stand on. We're all equal. We're all on the same ground. And that ground is sin and fallen short of the glory of God. But despite our sin, Jesus went to the cross to reconcile us to God. He took our broken relationship, our broken community with God, and He reconciled it. He gave us a new relationship and restored community. My longing for genuine community was found when I realized that Jesus had restored my relationship with God. The Bible talks about when you become a Christian, you become adopted into God's family. And you become God's son. And as God's son, you have Jesus as your older brother, and you have every other Christian in the world as a brother and sister in the faith. They're your family. That's a genuine community. And there is no sense of entitlement, and there is no sense of superiority we all stand before God as sinners, saved by Jesus, who was a free gift. So I, I found this genuine community in my relationship with God and my relationship with His family. I found what I was looking for.